Shop Talks, which is a project of the Ink Kitchen, which is a media resource for about garments and decorating and trying to bring people together to share information. Sponsored by the Impression Show here, Haynes and Hirsch. And uh, I have here my friend Dub Charney from Los Angeles Apparel. And we're going to talk about trends. Mostly he's going to talk about trends in the garment industry right now. Take it away, Dove. Well, I think, you know, the, the problem with the imprintable t-shirt industry versus the fashion apparel industry is it's very static. The margins are low on the manufacturing side. The supply chains, whether they're domestic or offshore, they're elongated. And for a manufacturer to take a leap of faith and do something new, it's very difficult. It's difficult to scale the new idea. There's a high cost of introducing it. There is the risk of failures. There's financial risk. There is, it, it, there's the cost, there's not, there's not only financial risk, but it just requires a lot of resources. And it's scary. Quite frankly, usually- In, in a long time, lead time. Yeah, too, and right? usually in the imprintable t-shirt industry, it's probably easier to copy what somebody else is doing. For example, when the Haynes BFT came out in 1975, 1976, 1977, for Fertilum just said, we'll make a heavyweight. Or when right. Comfort Colors came out and then got purchased by Gildan, Haynes just said, we'll, we'll do our comfort uh, color thing and just knock it off. Because that's the path of least resistance. And that's how it goes. You just but to make something new, like in 1975, right. they made a company called Hanes 5000, became Hanes Imprintables, and they said, we're gonna, we're gonna instead of the underwear t-shirt, we're gonna do heavyweight shirts for the printer. And the main buyer was Ocean Pacific. This is, this is the institutional history that right. I heard. Right. And so they, they broke out. They made, that lasted from 1975, went on to 19, in, mid 90s until the, 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 the beefy tee and all its copies, heavyweight tees, got knocked out by a new idea. That one, I catalyzed it, 30 singles t-shirts. Right. But now everybody's in the 30 single t-shirt game. Okay, there's like 25 versions of it. Right. And they've synthesized it. More than 25. Yeah, they've, 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 they, you know, distilled it, distilled it, no, distilled it, distilled it, distilled it, distilled it, distilled it. And now there's like, there's, there's like 50, you know, there's like 50 valet parking guys and there's only three cars showing up. It's, it's you know, it's, 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 it's kind of, oh, it's, it's done. And the consumer, the, the end consumer or the ad specialty consumer, the ad specialty consumers, let's say the bar, right? The steakhouse right. or the clients at the steakhouse that need a new shirt. They're saying like, you know, I've seen this one before. And I don't really like it. Just like, so the biggest trend, it's every 10, 20 years. And someone has to have the, the, the chutzpah or the balls. balls. If you're Italian, <laughs> it's balls. If you're Yiddish, it's chutzpah. This means the same thing, right? Cojones. The gumption, the gumption. Cojones. Yeah, the cojones, the gumption, whatever, to, make, to catalyze it. Someone, I, I'm one of those people, and you know, I'll pass away. At a certain point, I, I'm hoping to live to 100, but someone else will have to catalyze. There's a few people. Someone catalyzed the Haynes BPT. Someone had to make that decision. Someone catalyzed, you know, the heavyweight champion fleece somewhere in 1965 or yeah. 1970, whatever, the thick stuff, right? Yep. There's different moments of time. Right now, I think we're in that one of those moments. What made this all so much more complicated was that everything went offshore. So it's even harder to make a bust a move, right. you know? Yep. So new ideas come. I think the new idea right now, the new idea is it's the renaissance of the heavyweight tee. And that's big. It's not just the heavyweight tee. It's a textile renaissance, but also fits have to be rethought. Like how tight, Too tight. and I don't want to give away all my secrets to my competitors, but they could... You know, and even if I hand them the recipe, even if I say this is the pattern, okay, this is do it this way, they won't do it because you have to be able not just to invent the idea, but you have to be able to you have to not only make the do the product development, not only get the fit down, 
but you have to be able to market it and break out and be alluring enough to the market, trustworthy enough that they say, yeah, let's try that new idea. Or in this case, let's try Drub's new idea. No, we but have the same thing with printing. We do some crazy right, like stuff. I'll tell people how to do it. And they, they, they don't have the wherewithal or they don't, the they desire, don't want to do the, the work. The will or the, or the, the sell or they don't want to take the risk. Do, yeah. But this, this armhole is too tight. One thing is, yes. does the armhole go to here? And you have this baggy armhole. Now, the thing also is a consumer initially, someone that had the balls to do something different was the team at Apple with the touchscreen. And if you look at the interview of the CEOs, I think it was a co-CEO situation, BlackBerry, they said no one is ever going to go with a touchscreen. And true, the consumer actually, the journalists, the consumers, they were apprehensive. I personally was apprehensive about migrating to touchscreen, but someone had the foresight and the balls to say, doesn't matter what's happening right now, the consumer will adopt it. And I know that they will, I have the confidence that they will, and that's what it takes in the imprintable t-shirt industry is someone to say, yeah, they think it's baggy now. Little losers. They're gonna come walking right into my hand. And who really, who really, who really figured this all out? Who mapped out the science of all this? There is a, there is a writer, there is a journalist, there is a, well, there's a writer. He's probably one of the most write, important writers of our time. It's Malcolm Gladwell. Malcolm Gladwell basically said, 4% of the population are, is innovative. 13% of the population is early adapter. My numbers might be off by a point, but it's, all right. it's like three, 14 is 3% are innovative, 14% early adapter, 34% early majority, 34% late majority, and 17% is lagger. Assholes. They're not assholes. They're not assholes at all. But it's like Aber like take take the brand. Sorry, Aeropo I thought I was reading your mind. Arrow Postal was a brand that never really catered to the innovator early adapter, even early majority. It was always a brand for the late majority or the lagger. So the problem with a brand like that or a product of a product, if you introduce a product that's only speaking to the lagger, or in the case of the BlackBerry, they said, ah, it's too niche. Well, they got it wrong. So sometimes in our industry, in the printable t-shirt industry, someone's got to take that risk to do something new on the bodies. And I'm one of those people, I'm, I'm one of those people that, you know, that, that I'm a catalyzer. That was my strength. I, lost control of my company, we all know the story, but you know, I'm back at it, because that's my asset. That's what I do. I come up with new ideas. Now, what are the new ideas right now? Yeah, what are Is they? I think it's thicker fabrics with less stretch. You know when the other says, it's so, 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 it's so, 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 Like, not everybody wants modal, okay? Or they go, it's got stretch. Like. You know what, if you go, so for one, it's not, it could be coarser, thicker, if it's knit, more tightly knit. I mean, there are different kinds of soft. There's like the silky soft, yeah. or plush soft. And by the way, just because right everybody's running in that direction, there's still niches, there's like a niche. Like there's several niches, even if you're off. Like Ed Hardy, it sounds like a laughable brand, right? Right now, Ed Hardy, what are you talking about Ed Hardy, right? But I can tell you, you can walk into a party with a very high-end crowd wearing full Ed Hardy, and it could be interesting. Okay, so there's anomalies, and you can't stereotype everything, and there's always room for different markets, and while everything's going in one direction, you know, you can go in another direction, but it's niche. But right now, on big trend, we're going with fabrics that have less stretch, that the, 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 the need for super soft and soft, 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 and it, like, you know, that's over. I think open end is an interesting fabric, you know, it's an interesting textile, open end fabrics, because they're coarser, especially when they've been washed, right? right. So you have, you remember that everybody, oh, open end is horrifying. It's not. I, I propagated that theme. I mean, you can, br <laughs> you can brush it and do all kinds of softeners and whatever. It can be not so coarse, right? You can wash it with enzymes is the first right. step. Okay, so I'm saying thicker fabrics, more tightly knit, with less stretch. In general, you can still have stretch, but you ever seen some of these t-shirts where you just can stretch them from like 24 inches to 48 inches? Yes. That's, that's toasted in a large way. 
less see-through, coarser. It kind of reminds me, I wrote an article about the relaxed fit era in, in about 1988, it was emerging, where bigger things. You used to actually, do you remember you used to actually be able to do an event and just make extra large t-shirts? That's right. The extra it, large, the, crazy the XL only movement is coming back. I talked about it this morning. Right. The X, but d that time. It used to really yeah, be but the Hanes BVT was a 23 inch extra large, which they were hanging on. It was like these Eisenhower guys that are all dead now at this point. They were hanging on to this interpretation of what should be extra large. Eventually extra large became 24 inch from 23. That's the institutional history. But 23 inch, a 23 inch garment that shrinks to 22, which is this size large. This is a 22 after wash. It hits most of the consumers. Right. Like I, I have one of, you know, one of my great colleagues, Talia. She can wear a size large. No problem. Then I got my friend Jonathan. He could wear a size large. No problem. Like, you know, it would be a little tight on Jonathan, but he could do it. But yeah, extra large only. That trend is positioned to come back. Now, things, just because there's an audience, let's supposing there's the, 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 the market is in the mood. It's let's say we're in a market, a foreign market, where beer doesn't exist. And the market really wants beer. Someone's got to bring them the beer. Just right. because the sailors wanted beer doesn't mean they're going to start drinking beer. At, someone's, got to, someone's got to bring the beer to them. You understand? I'm saying that oversized concept that you just mentioned, the extra large, right. and that was a crisis in the industry. Remember, there's upcharges. It was crazy. You bought, you buy extra large only, you got to pay two fifty a dozen. There was all that crazy shit going yes. on. But Awful. I don't know how old you are. How old are you? 66. You're a geezer, man. I know, man. I'm a geezer, too. I'm 51. <laughs> Woo! Okay, anyway, yeah, it's, it's fun to be... When you get there, it's kind of more fun than you just people just don't give a shit. That's what happens. Yeah, yeah, you can just fart in public. It doesn't matter. Okay, anyway, Speak so, for yourself on that one. Oh, come on. You just farted right now. Okay, anyway, so, You've been farting the whole time, no, it's a you little liar. It's a whoopee cushion. Okay, anyway, so... What I'm saying is... Catalyzation is necessary, but if there is some vehicle to catalyze new ideas... There are points in time where it's very important in our industry. And I think we're in one of those times. That's, you know, I think everybody knows that. I think, you know, they're trying, my competitors are trying, it's a dog fight, which ideas actually get adopted, who controls that adoption, right. you know? And I'm saying, if you have the idea right, it's kind of like the blank t-shirt industry is like the screen print industry. Let's supposing, what does it cost on average in the United States for a one color print 200 pieces. Dollar. A buck, right? Now, but if you have the newest thing, even if it's not more expensive, but you have it and the others don't, you can charge two. Even though your cost is still the same, let's say your cost right. is yep. 42 cents or something, you sell them for a buck, right? Pre-overhead, et cetera, et cetera. If you have that special thing, it's the same thing in the <clears throat> blank side, which I'm speaking to right now, is if you have the right fit, well, you know, so-and-so got got the textile down, but the fit ain't right. It's got to hit it on all four cylinders, but then if that pipe takes place, it's like the new 2001, right? We all know what that means. We know what 5180 is, right? We know certain numbers, certain styles hit it out of the park, like the Haynes BVT, and I don't think it is what it was, and we, you know, there's all kinds of ideas of what it was. By the way, here's another little trick that goes on in our industry about blocks and fits. They sometimes change it behind your back. Remarkable changes that are noteworthy, being 51 years old and having been in this thing since I'm 17 years old or 15, and I know it because I watched this thing like a hawk. There was a time they went from blind hem to two needle hem, and everybody, someone did it, and then everybody had to do it. Do you remember when that happened? Yes. So it went, everybody was doing blind hem, and then someone took the leap of faith. I don't know who it was, whether it was Gildan or Haynes or for the loom. I, it might have been Haynes, and then everybody did it. Or remember when they started cover stitching the neck here? One guy did it, and then everybody had to do it. Or so, and remember when they, they so the cover stitch sleeve, the cover stitch bottom, and the cover stitch neck was a modification to how, th so they sometimes, instead of reinventing a whole style, they do what I call internally within my team, and I don't really like to share all this, but I'll share it with you now, chiropractic adjustments. Okay? Right. For example, sweatpant. This might be it. I don't even know. 
So I'll take a pant. I'll say, you know what? It's getting a little tight down here. It's getting a little tight. And I sense that tight sweatpants, tight pants, are toasted. You know, like when you walk into a party and a guy's wearing a very tight <laughs> sweatpant down at the calf, that's not what's on trend. You know, that's not what the highest thinking person is doing right now, right? So I need to maybe slightly widen the bottom of my sweatpant without anybody noticing. So what I'll do, and I think this is actually the sample, but I'm not sure. I'll add 3 eighths of an inch on the flat of the bottom of the leg, on one leg, not the other. And if I don't notice the difference, I'll say, okay, good. That's my first step to improving my product. Or longer sleeves are coming in right now. Short sleeves, but longer. So I might add an eighth quietly. And if you look, remember? So that you don't have to like pre all your inventory. You or right, whatever. so yeah, exactly. Like the style 4305. I don't know if anybody remembers that. Do you remember that style 4305, baby tee? Yes, the stretch. Girly tee, yeah, exactly. Line. That was a very big one. I changed the length a couple times. You look at the history of the Levi's 501. I saw this at a previous magic show. They show the Levi's 501 was not static. Neither was the Haynes BVD static. Actually, you ever see a Budweiser label, the history? Like from the first to the new, it's totally different, yeah. but no one notices But it. did the taste change? It might have too. They might have said, you know what, if we put in a little bit more salt, we did a focus group on the right group. And focus groups, I, I hate focus groups, I don't believe it, but it's a right focus group. Like one of the things, if it's, a, I don't want to say how I do my focus groups, I got a secret to it. I got a secret to it and it's, it's smart, but yeah, because I can only it, imagine. You can only got it. You, it, it. Who is the focus group? Like, if you're asking for people advice, if you're like a famous, if you're a famous athlete, don't even in athletics trends change. Like, how do you put the ball in the hoop? What's going on in hockey? What's the most efficient way to check a man across the boards? You know, like they they change. They like designer sports. They're really like no, the way to run now or the way to launch off the pool. The new idea. This guy starts the trend in Germany. Like to really know, but to ask the right people or to surround yourself with the right people. But where were we? You made a comment. I don't know how I could have gotten lost, the but tape. I did. <laughs> what, what I'm saying is to really get this right and to really, really refine the style, that's where it happens. And the one time I had the experience of doing something that I felt, you know, it's bigger than money when you love doing it, when this becomes a sport, setting new trends. When you look, get on, when you're in an airport, and you're looking at like all these people wearing t-shirts, say, that was me. You know, I, got, yeah. I, I catalyze that new idea. More important than money, it's fun. Because, you know, like you're, you're changing the behavior of how people are dressing. Like, if you even, you know what I'm saying? But I'm yeah. saying, what was standard in the last 20 years? I think where the market really needs to change. Like, and who's important to watch? Well, I think you touched on something else before, too. There's also a thing now, it seems like maybe anything goes also, that that we're not going to see all thin shirts, then all heavy shirts, and then all thin shirts. It used to s cycle like that, where it would just disappear. It seems like none of it disappears. Right well, hang now. on. I'm going to. You know I mean? I, I, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not. No. Right. They shouldn't I, disappear. That, and they won't. Because there is reversals. There are pocket. But I'll to give you an example. I lived in Wall when I moved to the United States. I was. That's right. You're an immigrant, huh? I'm an immigrant. Yeah. I, I got it. You know. I got a passport and everything, so calm down. Take it easy. All right. All right. So, okay. Um, when I moved to the United States, and I am an immigrant, and that's also one of the reasons sometimes when you're not in the United States, you, get a you really food. appreciate what is American. Okay? Like, Perspective. Well, yeah. Like, what, like, like um, it gives you this, especially in the English world, because I don't believe in countries. I am an anti-border guy. I don't believe in borders. Uh, but what I do believe it is we have a nation. It's the English-speaking nation, right? So when you're Australian or when you're Canadian or you, you have a certain point of view, oh, that's what the, the Americans are. So, the, the biggest country is the United States. So they don't always know what 
Americans don't really know what is American because they don't get out as much. as so the Canadians, they got to come to the States sometimes and fill up for gas or whatever. You know, like, whoop, let's go to the States. You know, they go to Florida. One out of seven Quebecers visit Florida every year. So people do get really? out. I thought yeah. they went to Maine. That was the uh, That's Canadian the, the, the other six went to Maine. Okay, anyway, so what I try to say is what, what, what I did notice when I did move to the United States, in, for, I went to boarding school, 12th grade, the townies and the chodies. I went to a prep school called Chote, and the, and the, and the prep school kids that were kind of were into the loose fit. And then the, the, pretty, the, pretty, the pretty women that worked in the dining hall, though, they were more, they were, they're in tight fit. And I think right now, we're, there is a crash we are in a period of openness where it's not monolithic. Like, you don't have to go one way. My big question is, does it last? Because I think you're right. You could, lightweight shirts are still hot. They're not going away, although the supply side is oversaturated. And I do think we're in, uh, this is a little secret of what I'm thinking, if I had a ton of money, which I don't, because it's very expensive. To, to launch a new style costs millions of dollars. Yeah, we talked about it yesterday. But I think the 30 single T, the, one of the problems is the fit sucks. If you take all of them, the fits kind of, I think that there's, a, there, there's, there's, not, there's not only about the, the lightweight t-shirt uh, textile, but also the block has been so, the, the current block is heavily saturated. It is harder to get a thin uh, 30 single shirt to fit, right? I mean, if you have a big boxy shirt, if it's a little more or less boxy, it's not as much of a problem as a tight. Mm, yeah, but a boxy type, one, you want to fit right fabric. too. I think you're right and you're wrong. I mean, there's there's two sides. That's yeah, if it's oversized, kind of drapes over. But the neck, a neck is very the signature of that hole. You know, like how it scoops down. It's not a perfect circle. You think they're stamping on a circle? No, it's a custom signature on it. and then what you put in it, it's like a spring, you put in a rib. That's like a high crew almost. Right, it is a high crew. Super high crew, Stedman. Boom. That's yeah. an important one. Stedman, super high crew and the high crew. Disappeared, got purchased by Haynes and got toasted, but those were good shirts. And the super high crew and the high crew are very... It's like the surf... Yeah, it's very important. Thing. High crew's hot right now. Right. Okay? Then, so you, you, what I'm trying to say is to get that, to, you think oversize is so easy, well, to get that circle right, then to put the, which rib you put in, don't forget, you, you have so much yarn per revolution on the rib, right? Then which yarn you use, how you knit it, and then the size of that neck block. What was that? No, no I, didn't mean to, I didn't mean to give you a finger. The size of that, the, the size, excuse me for that. The size of that, the size. You're excused. The size of the neck block. Right, you have the block that you're putting in the neck. It makes a big difference. So you have the height of the collar, how big that piece is that you're putting in the round, then how you knit it, and then which yarn. There's like four major variables that, and I think about it all the time. Like I put it on this morning, I said, is it too tight? So I let it out an eighth. And by the, you know, an no, eighth, it's hard to it get makes away, a right? difference. So it's not that it makes a difference on one garment, because you know, there's, there's also human error. No, I think you're right. I, I have lots of customers that when the ones that really care about their shirts, they'll be like, ah, I like that shirt, but the neck's a little tight or, or something like or that. Or loose. Or loose or whatever. Or it the circle's to too big. Yeah. Or the height of the collar or how the collars fit into the body. Even there's also how the operators are trained how to throw on that collar, which sewing right. machines they use. It's very, very technical. But if you hit it on all four cylinders, you can create, like it's kind of, it's almost like you go underwater. How long, you know, you go underwater for two minutes and you survive and you get to the other side. Not everybody gets there, but if you can, then you get to the other side. <laughs> there is another world, and that's what, that's how this industry kind of works. The imprintable T-shirt industry has elongated. You know, there's a lot of barriers to progress, just like there is in the phone industry. You know, when you went to touch screen, it's kind of there's barriers to progress, but sometimes it happens and it just unfolds. And I think we're on the cusp of that with, you know, bigger bodies, possibly the extra large only movement could come back or the one size movement. I think bigger bodies, higher collars, um, you know, we're moving somewhere, but does that mean the death of other? No. All right. All right. How about uh, any questions? All right. Well, everyone learned everything, apparently. All right. Well, um, thanks for attending this talk, and I want to thank Dub Charney for being here today. Thank you very much. Thanks, man. Thank